Well, hello YouTube and the YouTube Koi Kitten community. My name's Mark. This is Irish Jordy's Koi. And I'm just going to show you around my setup. And I think we'll just go from there. So, this is my pond. It's roughly 15,000 litres. Um, wife's rabbit there enjoying a bit of sun. Likes to keep my acer trees under control, the little bugger. It's quite a warm afternoon up here for a change in the northeast of England. Um, I think I'll probably talk everyone through the setup and we'll just maybe do a filter clean later on and show people how I clean my setup. So we'll just do that. Now at the heart of my system there's a Draco Drum Solemn 25. You might have seen it on a previous video I put out of photo shots of me building the pond. It's hidden underneath this table which is fed by two bottom drains in the pond. The pond is six foot deep at each end. So we have one bottom drain down there and we have one right over there at the other side. There, go to the drum. The drum then goes to the seeds, one on each end, which is then also there's a skimmer under there, which goes to the sieve. 14,500 litre pump takes pumps it round there up the path hidden nicely in that bamboo tube you can just see into one of the nexuses this is one of the first nexus I bought the nexus 200 I believe some good 10 year back bit of a working projects going on in this one. It's not full of K1 media anymore, which I'll explain a bit later on. It still has the original sponge centre forms that I have replaced a few times over the years. I've got myself some water lettuces this year, just try and put in, see how they're grown. They seem to do the job, help keep some crap out the top. Made a stainless steel cover for the centre, stop the algae growing in the foam, stops it blogging up as quick. So then, then if we look at the other side of the pond it's quite an identical system. Out of the drum, into the sieve, pump from the sieve, into the skimmer, that side the same, pumped up here, pumped, 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 pumped into this which is a bit of a contraption at the minute, but I'm making a filter house, stroke bar look-alike. That is then pumped into the larger Nexus 300, which then leaves that Nexus by four inch pipe, runs around the back of this quarantine chamber tub, not currently used as a quarantine chamber, and gravity feeds the Nexus 200 again, out of there, through this big holding tank or whatever I'm going to make it into in the future. Uh, travels through there, four inch pipe out, feeds under the deck. And now underneath the seat and table, there's some hatches here. I'm not going to lift them up today, we'll do that another time. There's a, a sort of DIY Bucky River system. That's both nexuses on both sides end up feeding into. Goes on through the through the three chambers that's in there and returns to the pond by the waterfall. Now in the waterfall built we have a submergible UV and I have sort of tanked the sides of the hot spots of it with some stainless steel. The plastic should be good enough but there's no point in taking the chance with it. 
and that's where it returns back to the pond. I'm currently using one of these Pro Pond Auto Food Feeders, which I'm having really good time with, to be honest. It's sort of doing exactly what I needed to do. Pretty cold up here. We are down to 11. 0.2 now. Fish are really backing off the food. Now you see, next to each skimmer inlet, I have an air stone which is on a timer. Comes on just five minutes before the feeder goes off. Gives the fish a heads up. Normally, it's something about to happen for them. Slowly learning that process. This is the timer switch box which controls the air in front of the skimmers and my other pumps, filter and the light I have around the pond is in those, one of those feeds so that all works really well, happy with that So then, the cleaning for me is mostly very simple the Drapo drum handles the worst of it I've got that done here Straight to waste. So if you know how a drum works by now, lifesaver for me, not being home much through the week working away. Tends to look after itself. Once a week I'll dump the Nexus. I don't do any constant trickle in. It is literally just what comes out the nexus gets replaced and that's the water change. For me to do that it's quite simple, just go to the control switch. I'll knock off number three, which is the pump to the nexus on the right hand side. Take the cover off. Let the remaining water go down the outlet. I have a raised inlet there. It just stops the water back feeding past that point. Take the centre foam out, get my hands dirty a bit. Don't mind. Very little in there really after following on off the drum, just mostly green water. Centre tube in. Turn the outlet handle, just let that drain away to waste. I have a, a setup, as you can see that on the outlet of the waste, I've currently, there's no need for it because there's so much rain yesterday, but I can water all my plants across the back with the waste that comes off the nexus. Yes, trees, enjoy it. Getting that time of year now where they're all dying off a bit, but it's still pretty good. So that's something I'm quite happy with. Once that centre chamber is completely emptied, release the inlet, have a good back flush, get some of the crap out that's in the inner chamber, or the outer chamber, should I say. Right. Waste handle back to closed, centre pipe out. Just let the remaining water come out and equalise the chambers. Champion. Form back in. Pump back on. It's all right for some. That'll fill up. Work its way back to the waterfall. I'm going to do exactly the same 
on the other side. So, oh, pump one off. So this is the Nexus 300. I've already inserted the central pipe. This one has the easy in it of the old K1 media. I haven't felt the need to go to the new, smaller K1 micro. So we all know these work, but there's a change, turn of the air. Let the centre boil. Just give it a minute to start turning over. Again, nothing really much coming out of it. Wouldn't expect coming on after the drum filter. These old Nexus is really just act as new bio chambers. I had them, paid a lot of money for them. Didn't want to just give them away for nothing when I could use them. So that's what happened there. So we're now just gonna dump that chamber. Again, all this is tied into the pipework, which if I choose to, it's a turn of a valve, then it waters the plants. That's it. You can see, they've all got a tube on them with an independent tap. That can control what gets what. Right, now that that's empty, all I do now is again let the outer chamber float back into the inner which in turn washes the remaining crap out of the inner section. Put all that to drain. Helps me with my water change, a bit more fresh in. Take that back out. that back off. Now remember this Nexus purely feeds the smaller one just via gravity. So back over on the smaller Nexus 200 side. Lid off. Again Old school style central form in there. You can see the reflection at the minute. Now, normally, and it might be the case again here, you'd be really surprised that after the drum filter uh, to that nexus there with the easy center, this sponge normally catches the most dirt. Now I've just given that a good swirl around, squeeze the sponge out a few times. As you can see, a load of crap in the last one. So we'll just, well, be mostly just green water again, but it still catches more than the other one did. Central pipe in. I then need to jump down to the level below. We're just in here, there's a convenient little door where I have the waste handle for that Nexus 200. So that now turned. We have the worst out there. Again, let's give it a little back brush. Pull some of the crap out of the bottom. Bio chamber. Helps my water change. Let me let it get 
the same level as the height of the pipe. I'll do. Drainage back to off. I'm closed. Then we have just central pipe to remove. Old style foam straight back in. Back down at the control panel. It's easy enough. Uh, pump one back on. Tuba, she's not scared of out. Stick that lid back on. And sorted. Bloody rain now. Right, let's see if I can get this back. No, I'll come back this once I've got that on. Right, lid back on. The larger Nexus 300, start to fill back up. Let's shift it and turn. Down the outlet. Around the back, fills up the 200 as we discussed. Right, while we're waiting for that to fill up, I'll just talk you through this area at the back. It was what I used to actually house the fish while I was making the new pond. They were in that big vat. I don't remember the exact size of it now, but it's fairly big. It was filtered while the fish were in there by the 300 and the 200. So plenty of filtration for the size of the vat. They were in there about a year, mostly through winter. Now you can't see it, but in between those two black pipes, there's a four inch ball valve. If I close, it's currently closed. If I open it, water leaves the 300 and directly goes the route back under the decking, through the Backy River, through the waterfall and back. That then gives me the option, should I need it, to have a quarantine tank, hospital tank, that's got a mature filter ready to go on it. I just need to put another pump in, feed this 200 independently, and that will always be good to go. The other options is, like you've seen on other YouTubers, where you use a bog filter style. I've got plants in here. I did, I think, about putting a big, oh, what do you call them again? Backy shower. On the, in between the two. Just options. Love me options. Also, the options I want is well, not really options the wrong word but the look I want is an enclosed filter house during the winter so I'll be getting some polycarbonate sheets which will go on the roof and insulate around the back fences but I've got some glass in there what you haven't seen probably yet is that support is just pinned in so it swings up that roof lowers down and actually makes it a very small insulated chamber once it's finished during the winter months. I'll show you a picture of that soon. But like I say, during the summer months, I wanted to disguise the filters and look like a bit of a garden bar area. And I'll get some stools put in front of that sleeper there. So I uh, there, like I was saying before, the roof folded down. Eventually that'll get some polycarb in the roof and some insulation in the other parts. And that'll be to stop the wind chill and etc. for the winter. Uh, brings us onto the skimmers. 
can see one on each end, one over there. So underneath one of the slabs gives us access to the skimmer, also access to the four inch rod and point which is comes straight directly up. You see up there. The bottom drain is just underneath that old fish. <laughs> Couldn't tell you what type it is, it's about 25 year old that fish. Never grew. So, rod and point. Designed if I need to hide the wet back down there, pull out some blockage. Nice clean run straight to the drain. The skimmer into the ultra sieve three, I believe these ones are. Again, one each side. They're currently not working because the water level is low in the pond. Off the nexus dumps we've just done. Which brings us nicely onto our next point of just topping the pond back up. Oh, said hose pipe. Probably get it all in a knot, as usual. Right, so that nicely nipped in between a couple of the pond ed edging stones. I'll just show you what happens here. Oh, build a nice little box. Stop the insulated, stop obviously the frost knacking up the, because one is from the top up, one is what feeds the Draco drums wash. So we really don't want that icing up. Down the pipe, in there, uh, into our dechlorinator setup. So uh, through the big blue, then through the three stage, just connect that on. I'm trying to turn that one. Let me let that top back up. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed this walk over, or walk through, should I say, of my pond. It's really just to put the pond out there so when I talk to people on lives or YouTube comments and refer to my pond they have a bit of an understanding of what I'm talking about so looking forward to getting the noise all better the YouTube community and I think that's it for this video thanks see you next time